Hello, welcome back to Aetheral Space 13.47 in the Shadow Garden. We are back. Hello. For the Spotify viewers, you won't understand what I'm saying here, but for the YouTube viewers, you can see this physically. Or visually, rather. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a Zoom call at the start of it. What is this, man? <laughs> are they using Sphere? Sphere Premium? No, of course not. They would never use Sphere. What video conferencing software are they using? Perhaps if we read, we'll discover more about what the situation describes. Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's my new meme. It only works on people who understand me. It's like that, have you seen that tweet where it's like <laughs> you watch the movie and information is revealed? <laughs> yeah. That's you with April Space. What if I fucking raffle stomped you? What if I curb stomped you? How could you do that? I would make you bite the curb and then I'd plant my foot really Even hard. Even if I looked up with head. like tears in my eyes, burning in my eyes. <laughs> You'd be like, someone do something! And I'd fucking stomp really hard. And then that would but be... he would not have the effect you wish. You're like, uh, I'm sure I stomped him. But he's still alive. He, he would create. He would create the tenth world over and over. You're like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting curb stomped. Get you're like, uh, did the pavement crack? <laughs> <laughs> I enforced my teeth. It's like, allow me. Mm, thank you for the meal. <laughs> <laughs> I took a bite out of the pavement. <laughs> Could you reinforce your stomach acid to consume food humans normally can't? Yeah. Oh. Because if I understand, reinforcement does isn't just to make it generically stronger. It makes stuff better at what it does, right? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Could you reinforce your blood cells to fight diseases? Do Aether users yeah. get sick? Well, they probably they get it less. And you can Ooh. reduce that sickness even further if you're doing that with intent. Yeah. Interesting. Alright, shall we do this? Yeah. Now joining Noel Edmonds. Now joining Rayon Chapitel. Noelle stepped forward on feet that did not exist, upon ground that did not exist, as she breathed in air that did not exist. The environment around her quickly changed, the empty void quickly becoming populated by her subconscious. The grand hall of a grand castle spread out before her, architecture laid out illogically like something from a dream. Pillars that supported nothing but air, paintings with indeterminate faces, and a throne that could never sit a human being. She sat it anyway. Annoyingly enough, she still felt too small for a product of her own imagination. Oh, is she doing some shit in her archive? Mm. The sky above turned orange as Rayanch's mi minis, presumably? Oh. As Rayanch's mind painted it, the man himself appearing cross-legged on a floating disc-like platform, the floor emblazoned with the sigil of the legendary killing artist Tiamon Mars, a fist severed from the arm. He opened. So when you say a fist severed from the arm, is it just like a fist, or is it literally like a fist cut off with blood and then an arm? Yeah. Cut okay. off. He opened his pugnant golden eyes as he looked back at the barren landscape beyond what they'd made. His eyes narrowed. It was obvious that he hated every second he was here, yet he still accompanied her. Why? Noel couldn't fathom it. She didn't let it bother her, though. When she was in this landscape, she preferred to focus on the stabilizing effect it had on her psyche. The impulses and thoughts that had once been haphazard and intrusive now smoothly flowed in her desired direction. She felt calm. She felt human. As if she'd been breathing poison her whole life before someone had introduced her to air. The intention of this place hadn't been to serve as an artificial archive, but it worked well enough for that purpose. This virtual realm, derived from the Garden of the Paradisus, I presume, not the Paradidas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was a secure location through which members of their organization could meet and plan at leisure. No fear of eavesdropping. Oh, so she's using their, like, tech heaven to be her, like, pseudo-archive? Yeah. Interesting. When you were an enemy of the entire world, a second of secrecy became worth its weight in gold. Wrong its. It was called the Shadow Garden, and it was her own creation. Now, jo I love how you gave up on its altogether. Well, a second doesn't have any weight, so... <laughs> now joining Smith. Noel shuddered. Uh, see, this is why Smith freaks me out. Aside from being a freaky old man head, it's like everyone else has, like, Noel Edmonds, uh, Rayan Patel, a uh, Toy Muzazi, and then it's just Smith. Yeah, all I don't the, trust uh, that. The Dark Star, like, the initial Dark Star people introduced have very normal names, that intentionally. <laughs> it's freaky as fuck. Noel shuddered as the calm quiet she'd been enjoying was interrupted. An ocean of black ink began to encroach from the west, the amorphous body of Smith shifting and changing to fill every nook and cranny, his head the wrinkled countenance of a kindly grandfather, blown up to unreasonable proportions, wriggled free of the black mass. Oh, Miss Edmonds, Smith cooed, looking down on Noel from afar. It's been too long since we met face to face. 
How you've grown! Noelle rolled her eyes. Our avatars here are an aggregate of our real selves and our self-image. Minor changes like that don't mean anything. But she had grown. Smith's colossal gaze slid up to Rayanch. And good Mr. Patel, always a pleasure. Rayanch simply glared, nodded, and grunted. No one was fairly sure she could count the number of times he'd spoken to fellow members of Darkstar on her fingers. It didn't seem to bother Smith, though. I am not going to remember fucking Ranch's voice. He will probably have a new voice. I hate to tell you this. <laughs> no In worries. three years, Dan Hody. <clears throat> as taciturn as ever. The thing nodded sagely. But that in itself has its charm. Every day, I grow more confident in my decision to recruit you two. He chuckled, and the ocean that was his body rippled in sympathy. To be perfectly honest, Noel had little idea what Smith actually was. He wasn't a normal human, to be sure, but he didn't seem to be a scurrant, either. A scurrant couldn't appear and disappear wherever he liked, oozing from the walls and floors. A scurrant couldn't change his shape from moment to moment. A scurrant couldn't take a man and... A skull pushed its way out of the side of Smith's head, silently screaming, until a tendril firmly pushed it far below the surface. My apologies, Smith chuckled again. Dear Hans has been restless lately. It was not me, it was my food. It just came up to say hello. And now it's gone back down below. <laughs> Noelle honestly had no idea what to say to that, so she just nodded. Now joining McCoy. So there's no way Smith isn't related to that flashback we got last chapter, right? What do you mean? <laughs> with, like, all the freaky people and their different powers getting owned. Well, he has something to do that. with that. Maybe. <laughs> Hmm. I have a feeling that, like, a lot of these Dark Star people are just, like, Nyane's siblings that he fucking resurrected or some shit. I don't know. I don't trust you, Tan. <clears throat> now joining McCoy. A lighter flickered on three times. With the first flick, McCoy herself appeared. A tall woman wrapped from head to toe in bandages, a red trench coat and a fedora draped over her form. With the second flick, a city appeared around her. An endless labyrinth of streets and alleyways, indistinct neon signs burning at the eyeballs. With the third flick, the sun was awoken. A mighty, bleeding sphere, sending red rain down towards the landscape McCoy had created. A fourth flick, and with it, McCoy lit a cigarette in her ha other hand. She did not smoke it. This was nothing but muscle memory. Have we started? McCoy asked, her cold voice curiously clear through the bandages around her mouth. Smith shook his head. We still await the night and our king. There's also our guest. The UAP guy? <sniffs> McCoy snorted. I'm sure he'll make us wait for him. Ah, uh, don't say such things, Smith replied. Our king is quite fond of him. Noel cleared her throat, nodding to McCoy. It was a strange sensation. Despite the great virtual distances that separated them, she could see and hear everyone else in the Shadow Garden as if they were face to face. Good evening, comrade. I trust your work goes well? Hmm? McCoy grunted. Yeah, sure. Noel frowned. Anyway, McCoy turned back to Smith, ignoring Noel. Are you sure Rhodes can even use this thing? He's hardly. Now joining the Abyssal Knight. Shut up. Air shivered. Ground shook. Noel whipped her head around to behold the new arrival. The environment the Abyssal Knight had created around himself was barely distinguishable from the void that had spawned it. An endless expanse of black, pressing down on everything within it, with only occasional and distant flashes of gold to entertain the notions of distance and existence. It was tempting to see the Abyssal Knight slumped over in the middle of that darkness and think of him as a corpse. That was... Until you saw his eyes. The only trace of his ravaged face visible behind his helmet. Those eyes blazed with purple aether, and burned with unending hatred. This was not a comrade Noel felt safe to greet. This was hardly one that she felt safe looking at. In the distance, Rayon shifted uncomfortably. What do, do, do you want? The knight growled, his stuttering sounding more like a glitching videograph than any expression of anxiety. Where is the dis? We have come to hear from our king. Good night, Smith informed him from up on high. This is the Shadow God, an ingenious creation of Miss Edmonds, where we may speak freely. Loud, 
the knight growled, his armor shuddering as he lay on the ground. Lounging there like that, he almost reminded Noel of a lion. A feral, diseased lion. Now joining. Abstract! Noel frowned at the unfamiliar name. This wasn't one of the comrades she'd been introduced to. Was this the person from the UAP that had been helping them then? Someone named Abstract? She saw the sculpted world below, before the sculptor. Stark white, sterile white, a laboratory without seams or boundaries, filled with floating cubes. Atop one of those cubes, as if it were a table, were spread out countless instruments and samples that Noel could barely grasp the purpose of. Blank white fingers took a test tube and raised it to an eyeless face, inspecting it. The white dust inside quivered in response. Uh, voice? Um... What'd you say? I'll, I'll, maybe like this. Maybe a little bit southern, but not, like, characterish. I hope you don't mind. Abstract said, shaking the tube slightly. But I brought some of my work with me. If you do mind, that's irrelevant. I'll continue my work anyway. Abstract's form was a complete blank. No face, no body, just a vague white haze. Noel scowled. That went beyond the influence self-image could have on the Shadow Garden. Somehow this person had meddled with her program. That was supposed to be impossible. Smith nodded to the new arrival. Welcome, my friend. This is our first time meeting, but... Pardon, but I'm still speaking, Abstract said, returning the test tube to its holder. Ordinarily, I wouldn't lower myself to speak to peons in the first place, but my, oh my, you are an eclectic bunch, aren't you? He took a scalpel from the table and pointed it upwards, Smith's face reflected in the perfect sheen of the blade. The familiar of the King of Darkstar, the scalpel turned to behold McCoy. The mortal remains of the great detective October Jones. Finally, it reflected the distant and seething abyssal night. And the disgraced Samson Rhodes. Why, I feel as though I'm in a museum. <clears throat> Three sets of eyes glared daggers at Abstract, but if he didn't notice it, and he certainly did, he certainly didn't care. Mm, certainly, certainly, huh? Heartbeat shotgun. Doesn't say that. Instead, Punch he just pointed his. <laughs> this guy changed it on the fly. Instead, you know, back in my day, Tan used to say New World Order when he changed things. Now, no, just, not doesn't even care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he just pointed his pinky towards Noel and Rayon as well. Noel frowned as she felt the attention of the interloper fall upon her. These two, however, I must confess, I do not know, Abstract said. Such a rarity. You were the first to connect to this channel, weren't you, girl? I take it you're the architect of the program. It's passable work. I'd give you a glowing review if you were a toddler, although you might be, given your height. Noel's frown deepened. Still, Abstract went on. Does the fact that the boy's environment lingers so close to your own mean he feels more responsibility for you than loyalty towards Darkstar? Is that really all right? When it comes to such a close-knit group of maniacs, one would think that fanaticism is a loud, the Abyssal Knight grunted. Abstract turned his head to regard him. Hmm? What was that? LOUD! The Abyssal Knight crossed the world in an instant, his rusted blade gouging a rift into the fabric of space. Abstract barely had time to raise a hand before he was suddenly and messily smashed against the wall, gore splattering across the sterile environment he'd constructed. His head barely intact, twitched against the edge of the sword. Rabid beast! He sneered. Are you simple? Injuring me in this space is meaningless. Even if this was the real world, an injury such as this would be... The knight turned his blade, crushing Abstract's head against the wall. A moment later, the indistinct man reappeared behind the hulking warrior. He spread his arms wide in contemptible exasperation. Understand now? He said. This is not reality. Killing me here bears no... Another swing of the sword gored him for over a kilometer. Abstract appeared again before the blood could finish flying. Listen to me, ignoramus! Another swing, another death. Noelle couldn't allow this sort of chaos to continue in her shadow garden. She cleared her throat, stuffing down the instinctive fear she felt when she looked at the Abyssal Knight, and shouted, Knight down! The Abyssal Knight showed no sign that he had heard her. He simply continued to swing his sword, obliterating Abstract again and again, like a game of whack-a-mole. Fine. Noelle had taken a situation like this into account. She had countermeasures. Raising her hand, she snapped her fingers, and immediately massive chains fell into existence. All it took was a jab of her finger with intent, and, like loyal serpents, they lunged towards the form of the knight. With these, she could at least make him stay still for the meeting. That was well within her. The knight noticed her. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! He looked at her, with one eye blazing purple with hatred. He roared. 
It was more like the roar of a paleo beast than a man, powerful enough to generate air pressure all on its own. Noelle noticed her body's response as though she stood a distance from it. Should it be all, though? No. Noticed her body's response as though she stood a distance from it. She's not standing a distance from her body. <laughs> okay. Her hands trembled. Her throat hurt. Her eyes burnt. The chains hesitated in the air for a single moment. A fatal moment. She knew logically that what the abstract said was true. Nothing the night did to her here meant anything. She couldn't even feel pain in the Shadow Garden. An injury was nothing but temporary damage to an avatar she was puppeteering. But, in that moment, she was certain she was about to die. The Abyssal Knight went to move, went to run, went to kill, but a wall of black oil surged forth to block his path. Cease! Smith hissed, face contorted inhumanly by anger, his blank white eyes staring up at the sky. Our king is calm. Now joining, Nyan. A black void devoured the sky. No, not a void. A sphere. Perfect and empty. A ceaseless shadow. A dark star. Uh, popcorn? Below it, as though the structure were a gift he was presenting them, floated Nyane. His cloak billowed out in space, dwarfing him like the wings of a great bat. His pale face smiled out at them from the centre of the mass like a terminal nucleus. Mm. In, in truth chuckled. I was here from the beginning. I was just curious to see how all my good friends would parlay with each other. His black eyes flicked over to the Abyssal Knight far down below. Down, Nighton snapped coldly. Immediately the knight collapsed to his hands and knees. Blood sprayed out from every gap in his armour, coating the floor around him, more and more flying free even as he was pressed down into the ground. The scream of pain and frustration he let out was deafening at first, but with just one further glare from Nighton, he was lowered to a hush. Kill you, Night Wheeze, trying in vain to look up at the King of Dark, sir. K -k kill you. I'll kill you. Kill you. Nine ignored him, instead turning his head to regard the reconstituted abstracts. <laughs> my apologies for Rhodes' conduct, my friend. He's a temperamental sort, as I'm sure you figured out. The two you just pointed out are Noel Edmonds and Rayange Patel, if you're still curious. They're our most recent recruits. Or well, he's allowed to be anonymous, but we're not. But enough pleasantries, Nyan smiled. I'm sure you have plenty of news from the UAP, right? How's my dear friend Pierrot doing? Abstract had no eyes to roll, but Noelle recognised the body language. I really, I really have no clue why you're so obsessed with a man you've never met, Nyan. Jamie Pierrot is as much of a dullard as he's ever been. The man continues to transparently pull in our lives. The Sarita of Andros, Nebula 2, the new Vanta Black Squad. He's on friendly terms with Shen Zhurong now as well. Uh, who was Shen Zhurong again? Um, Nebula One's guy. Oh, like his his leader. Yeah, and and, and, okay. and hubby, and he's hubby. Mm -hmm. Oh, hubby! In terms of sheer dumb force, he may well hold the advantage right now. I see. My inside. Well, I'm glad to hear that is doing well too. Don't worry, we'll be making our own moves soon enough. Oh, night! He crooked his finger up and the Abyssal Knight suddenly rose to his feet as though a great weight had been lifted from his shoulders. The warrior glared up at Nyane, his breath heaving. You must be patient with our new friend, Rhodes, Nyane shouted like a gentle parent. His research holds the key to our endgame, after all. The Abyssal Knight just hissed in response. Beneath his armour, opened up by the ordeal he just endured, Noel could see countless tiny purple dots moving, shining out from his tattered veins. One of the secrets to his strength, tiny aether batteries coursing through his veins, coursing through his blood, boosting his capacity and warping his reason. A shudder tried to go down her spine, but she prevented it. She wasn't afraid. You have a practice flattery, Nine. Abstract chuckled, putting a finger to absent lips. Although I can't say I dislike it. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Nine chuckled. Flattery is my favourite skill, just below waiting. And sadly, the time for that is almost at an end. He turned his head to McCoy, still strolling through the streets of her city of blood. We need to make sure Palatine moves as we want, Nyan commanded. You'll go and make contact with it, McCoy. As fellow awakenings, perhaps you can establish a rapport? McCoy snorted. Jackass. Oh dear, Nyan laughed. It seems I've said something ignorant. You have a question, Noel? This time a shiver really did go down Noel's spine. She hadn't even opened her mouth yet. Uh, yeah, she said, her halting voice carrying over eternity. You say to make contact with Palatine, but that thing's with the Absurd Weapons Lab, right? 
the security's gonna be top notch and, and we can't just get discovered, can we? Shouldn't I help? I got us onto the shisha, so not to worry, Mary replied, still smiling. The absurd weapons lab attention is split at the moment. To tell the truth, they're more focused on their upcoming collaboration with Erica Del said. Besides, Amber Coy is hardly helpless. I have faith in her. His eyes flicked back down to the abyssal lights. Do we know what Erica Dell said yet? This is the first time I've heard that name. Ooh. Rhodes, he went on. You'll stand by on Neutra 5 and await my signal to light the spark. Even one such as you should be able to manage that, hmm? Hold on, there's no way you actually have finally learned Roman numerals. I'm like shaking. You've gotten so <laughs> much stronger. Are you? <laughs> Who the hell are you? You're not Dan. Abstract spoke up. Neutra 5, he purred. That's right on the border. Planning some mischief nighting? Oh, but of course. Uh, popcorn. <clears throat> Me, sire! Smith's voice reverberated through his mask. What purpose would you grant me? Nine scratched his cheek with a finger. Joel Jal is almost fully digested, right? Smith nodded somberly. I'm afraid so, my king. It'll be a shame to lose the power of consciousness dilation. If I could take my own life in apology, I would surely do so. What punishment do you instead wish to bestow? Well, Nyan waved a vague hand. These things happen. It opens up a slot anyway, so go eat the crown after Dragon Hadrian's victory by default. Then you'll stick with me for the remainder of the dawn contest. What's the crown's power again? I mean, it's the one way you could designate either the various parts of themselves as the crown, and like it, it would be better at that than anyone else in the vicinity. Okay. You can make yourself the smartest in the room, basically, reliably. <laughs> oh, what about the strongest? Yeah, you could do that as well. Physically, a bright, at least. A bright pink blush spread across Smith's cheeks, and he nodded eagerly. Oh, yes, your grace, yes! As you say, to bask in your presence is far greater a pleasure than one such as I could ever hope for! My creator, my king, my god! Okay. <coughs> Noelle crossed her legs, sitting up in her marble throne. What about me? What do I do? Nine glanced over at her. Does your infiltration of the Shisha remain complete? Of course. His smile widened, just a tad. <laughs> then you've already done what you need to do. Until the time comes, you may indulge in the luxury of waiting. He didn't even bother addressing Rayanch. To him, the warrior was nothing more than an extension of Noelle's presence. Sure, she nodded. And with that... Nyan said, smiling benevolently down on them all, his eyes closed. We've said all that we need to. Next time we meet, we'll have many more victories to boast of. No, that's not his voice. What's his voice? Uh, it's like that, but maybe not as high-pitched. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that, Nyan said, smiling benevolently down on them all, his eyes closed. We've said all that we need to. Next time we meet, we'll have many more victories to boast of. Like that? Yeah. His eyes opened, and they were the abyss. And the Dark Star will loom ever closer. Closing connection. Is this the Kingdom of Dark Aether? Is it real? It's the Shadow God. <laughs> <clears throat> Closing connection. As the Shadow Garden peeled itself away from his consciousness, Zephyr Pandershi opened his eyes. That's a familiar name. Who is this? We've heard it a couple of times. Mm. How fascinating. That meeting had felt like it had lasted several minutes, but in reality it barely kept them occupied for a second. Time dilation inside the Shadow Garden itself. Nine's familiar had mentioned possessing the ability of consciousness dilation. Had the cogitant girl reverse engineered that ability when designing the Shadow Garden? Zephyr would have to investigate the possibility himself. For now, though, Abstract had his true work to get back to. He rose to his seat, striding across his laboratory, white coat swishing around his feet as he went. The space was cavernous, but not a single shadow was allowed here. Stark light devoured all. Countless workstations lined the walls, each of them manned, but they were just minor distractions. The true stars of this laboratory were held in massive glass cylinders, six in all like the pillars of a temple. Within them, to towering growths of the white panacea twitched and undulated, red specks of matter drifting through them. Oh, are these from Arc 8? Uh, we, well, that was the red panacea. We have not seen the white. No, 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 I mean, wasn't the white panacea like uh, Rana Valona's experiment? Um, he was doing weird stuff with Panacea, and it did turn white in the process. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. As Zephyr passed the glass, he took a grateful glimpse of his own reflection, at a perfect body kept in the youthful prime of its life. 
White hair cascaded down his shoulders, the red tips a stark contrast to his sparkling blue eyes. For a moment, he noted with distaste an imperfection in the angle of the cheekbones, but it was a simple matter to adjust them with his index fingers and lock them into a superior position. He smiled at the sight. What a genius he was. This guy is a gene tyrant or like a fucking gene tyrant sympathizer. I fucking know he is. Alone in his laboratory, he stood before the window, looking out on the sunless sky of Nermut, his dismal and depressing homeworld and dominion. Oh, fuck. Be that as it may, he was grateful for it, a place distant from the noise of the galaxy to work his craft. A world and people that existed for his convenience alone. What more could one ask for? His communicator beeped in his ear. Uh, still Southern voice? Yeah. Yes? He asked. Director, his assistant replied, calm and placid as Zephyr enjoyed. We've received word from Zhen Zhurong. Your presence is required for a meeting of the governing council. Of course, Zephyr chuckled. Nothing but meetings these days. Sir? A joke. You may laugh. Prepare my shuttle and entourage. Tell the Lord Mayor I'll set out for serendipity immediately. He didn't bother for a response, turning off the communicator and turning back towards his primary workstation, towards the project he'd been pursuing before being pulled into the Shadow Garden. It was a shame. He'd have liked to have been able to premiere his new creation at the next meeting of the Governing Council. For the time being, it seemed he'd still be a lone attendant. There, floating in a tank of clear liquid, was a figure. Its features made it impossible to tell whether it was male or female, young or old, but a distinct sense of power emanated from the being's body all the same. White and red hair billowed around the body in flat strips like ribbons, and even without a consciousness piloting it, it was staring straight ahead. A sta- I assume stark crystal blue? No, a sta- Zephyr looked with satisfaction into his own eyes. Nebula 4. Titan White. The Fairy Prince. Nebula of the Pandershi Foundation. Oh. He truly was a genius. This is Gene Tyrant Jr. over here. <laughs> Fucking hell. Is this a Gene Tyrant? Uh, he, I, I'm gonna tell you, no, he's not a Gene Tyrant. Is he, like, a wannabe Gene Tyrant? Well, I would say, if you went to the Gene Tyrants before they turned into Cinemorphous Masses and, like, looked at one of them, you would see a guy similar to this guy. <laughs> So he's on the precipice. Well, he has the, he has the sort of, he has a similar psychology as well. I'll say. Oh, <laughs> Dan, Dan, stop making gene tyrants. They're supposed to be dead. They're naturally occurring. <laughs> you know what's? Every time you introduce a new gene tyrant, it's so much funnier to me. Rana Valona didn't find one for a thousand years because it implies nobody liked him. <laughs> like nobody tried to reach out. Well, they weren't around for, during those thousand years. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> There's so many. What do you mean? We've all seen them during the revolutions in flashbacks. What? What do you mean? <laughs> no, you... Hold on. Have there been any other Gene Tyrants since Marie and... Not, uh, not post-revolutions we've seen. Mm. Okay. For some reason, I think I got mixed up with the fan theory of Grigory being a Gene Tyrant secretly. I think I got confused. Tanhoni, is this, is this man about to bring a new age of darkness? <laughs> Tanhoni! The galaxy just got better! Actually, no, it hasn't. <laughs> when did that been... happen? <laughs> <laughs> it just, the, the flavor of bad just changed. Oh, Lord have mercy. Alright, you ready for some questions? Absolutely. Uh, Aether all. <sighs> okay. Wiser asks, what happened to Rico and Chloe from the Oliphants after Arc 11? Any chance we'll get to see them again? Uh, Rico left the family to pursue being a healer, so maybe we'll see him in some capacity in, in that job. What about uh, Chloe? Chloe is uh, probably not doing too well. Um, the fam yeah, the criminal died, family right? that supported her has now collapsed, basically. What, uh, Scout was her brother, right? Uh, she, he was not a brother, now. Cousin? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I remember them being close, unless I'm misremembering. Yeah, they were like they were like siblings. Uh, Lan so she's, not, asks, she's not been having a nice two years, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, Lan By the way, Noelle was like 15 or 13 when we first found her. She was 13, I believe. Okay, and how old is Rayanch now? Because he was like older, right? He's older, yeah. 40-something? No, he was not 40-something, <laughs> never. He's in his like late 20s. Uh, okay. Lan asks, are the UAP and supremacy equivalent in techno technological advancement? 
Um, I would say in ver- it depends on in what kind of advancement, like weapons wise, like military yeah. droids, supremacy. Would have he much. was about. To, I was about to say he's. Spe- spe- I think he specified or someone did. Like, are there different things they're better at than each other? In, in the civilian pursuits, UAP would hold the thing, and a part, big part of that actually is because the Pandershi Foundation, which is like very good at science, and they sort of push the whole thing ahead a little bit. Okay. What about, uh, and I assume Supremacy has, like, the Helldivers better, gu- they put more guns than the Jets. But that's also very recent, because the Pandershi Foundation is not a long-lasting thing. This is, like, this generation. <laughs> oh, wow, like, the last... It, it, I will say you right now, Pandershi Foundation is named after this guy. He has not inherited anything. <laughs> oh, okay. How, how long has it been around? Uh, like, 30 years. Okay. Uh, you know, what's funny to me is, like, a 30 or 100 year old business is like a prestigious one in our lives, right? But in the world of Aetheral Space, I imagine the 30 year business is like a toddler. Yeah. It's like, oh, you little baby business, come back in 500 years. Uh, uh, they're allowed on the governing council simply because of how like good the technology correct. they've come out with is. Yeah, fucking gene tyrants. Uh, Quaker button note. Oh, Leanne also said it'd be cool to see a map of the galaxy at some point. Uh, maybe. Do you have any plans for that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I figured it was <laughs> the, easier for you in the, the ga- galaxy with a nebulous space <laughs> the that you just had. of it said sweat down the back of my neck. <laughs> How many planets, uh, inhabitable planets, like a broad number do you think there are in Aether? There's space? hundreds of thousands. Jesus, hundreds of thousands? Yeah. So a lot of terraforming went down. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, Quaker Button says, what group slash place in the galaxy is the highest population of Umbrans? Umbrans? Um, would depend. Um, uh, hmm. Probably Serendipity, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> Which would probably have the highest population of most things. Yeah. Quaker Button asks, could the Crown make anything other than their mind and body king, or was it just those two? They could specify it further to like, specific aspects, like memory they could do, or like a specific... It's still mind or body, but they could, like, focus on a specific aspect of mind or body to boost the effect further. Quaker asks, can Anatrice take on the personality of Aether users who are brain-dead but physically alive? Yes. Oh! Interesting. So, like, if they're a vegetable, you could do it. Yes. If if they're a vegetable, there's no possibility of them coming back from it. Oh! As far as she knows, there's no possibility of them coming back from it. And she's, like, done her due diligence. Okay. Interesting. She can't, she can't play it. She has to genuinely believe it and have good reason to believe it. Uh, JT asks, who were some of the other right-hand man type people for past Supremes? We know Mariloco. Wondering if Granba had an assistant of some kind. Well, Granba, he had, like, disciples, basically, because he was the guy yeah. who came up with He had apprentices, because he was the godsmith, right? Yeah, and he, he created Aethram, and it's like, they did not exist before him. Nice. Um, so he, he had a school but around him, like, that he taught how to make Aether Armaments and like... That was the Maker's Guild, right? Well, that, that was not established, but I was just about to say that. Yeah, they became the Maker Guild after he was no longer Supreme. Let's go! And they're like a, and they're like a small like, elite group of like Aether Smiths. Do they still exist to this day? They do, yeah. They're like extremely expensive if you want to commission something from them, but they do provide a bespoke Aether Armament to each Supreme. I it imagine it's like the most gallery. prestigious possible like Aether Armament college you can apply to, and they're like, hmm, you're the top of the top, I guess we could take you when in. When I say school, you will not go there to learn stuff. You are... <laughs> you go... Yeah, you go there, be- it's like the fucking Mensa, presumably. Exactly. Of, uh, yeah, it's like, you're the top guy. Uh, what are some, what are some, like, but yeah, were there any, like, specific right-hand mans you can think of? Well, I know we saw a snippet of Edgar in it with a Zez, but I imagine that I was, I don't like, know, that, a that's spoiler. a different range, because he wasn't even really supreme at that point. That was just, yeah. like, part of, like, the gang. Yeah. Because they were, like, the heroes of the revolutions. So, so, so no other infamous number twos? As well. Um, not, not that I can think of right here and now that I would feel comfortable, like, putting into the law. Fair enough. And it, 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 it's not like a copy and paste. Everyone, there's always a number one, number two. They have different arrangements. Uh, like asks, the Office of up? the Contenders was a Cadman specific thing, but they'd probably have some sort of equivalent of like, here are my guys. <laughs> Lan asks, what subspecies is slash was the Abyssal Knight? The Abyssal Knight was crownless. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Uh, we have a lot more of these to tear through. I'm happy to see the questions, but my God, have they piled up. Uh, 
But for now, I think we'll end it off here, and we'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye.